While the real-time strategy genre may not have the spark of life that it used to, there are still a plethora of great titles on the horizon, from remastered classics to exciting new IPs. And although it may seem unlikely right now, I am hopeful that the best is still to come. Here's my list of what are, in my opinion, the most exciting upcoming RTS games, plus a few extra ones at the end that haven't exactly been announced yet, but I do have my fingers crossed for. So without further ado, let's begin. First up we have Iron Harvest, a tactical, Company of Heroes-esque RTS set in an alternate history 1920s, and it's been developed by King Art Games. Heralding itself as the RTS fans actually want, a bold claim, no doubt. Iron Harvest has caught the eye of many a strategy fan over the last wee while, especially after its recent high profile showing at Gamescom 2019. While we're still a wee while away from its full release, a pre-release build was available to purchase throughout its Kickstarter campaign. So I'm happy to say I've actually had hands-on experience with this one, and if you've watched my video covering the alpha, you know I actually quite enjoyed it. The setting might be my favourite part, these old school diesel mechs just look super badass, and the promise of an epic single player campaign alongside intense co-op and multiplayer matches to go along with it, make Iron Harvest one of the most promising upcoming RTSs to come out in the next 12 months. So if you like the look of this one, then you can wishlist it on Steam and Good Old Games, there's a link below. Next is Homeworld 3, a sequel that I'm sure a lot of people thought would never come to be. Developed by Blackbird Interactive, creators of 2016's Homeworld prequel, it's set to release nearly 20 years after its predecessor Homeworld 2. It aims to live up to the name of the previous entries, both of which were acclaimed for their gameplay, graphics, and, well, just about everything else really, which will undoubtedly be an impressive feat. While we don't know a ton about the game right now other than the fact that it exists and it's being developed, that's really all people need to get excited. Blackbird proved themselves as a competent developer with Deserts of Karak, so he is hoping they deliver on the claim on creating a true sequel to the Legendary series. If you do want to support the development, then you can do so over on Fig, there's a link below. Well, this is a weird one. Like our last title, Age of Empires 4 is also a game we don't really know anything about, apart from the name. It's being developed a Relic, creators of series like Company of Heroes and Dawn of War, and of this video it has no discernible release date. It was announced over two years ago with a short, uninformative trailer in August 2017, and that's all the information we have. I'm thinking we'll hear more about it after the marketing tour of Age of Empires 2 Definitive has run its course, but for now all we have is our speculation. The reason it's on this list is simple, there hasn't been a new, fully fledged Age of Empires game since AoE 3, which was back in 2005, so it's exciting to think what a modern entry might look like. With Microsoft giving definitive additions to the older entries, as well as teasing this new one, it's looking like the classic series is intent on reclaiming some of its dominance in the genre, and that's something I and many others would love to see. Okay, back to games that are actually tangible products. Stronghold Warlords is the upcoming sequel to a long list of Stronghold games, dating back to the original Castle Sim from 2001. As always, it's being developed by Firefly Studios, and it's set to release sometime in 2020, and if I hazard a guess, I'd say it'd be earlier in the year rather than later, though we're yet to know for sure. First entry set in Asia, Warlords brings a host of new systems and mechanics to the table, most prominently the titular Warlord system where you can control and influence AI lords across the map to assist in building your castle and crushing your enemies. Although the earlier 2D entries are beloved, a lot of the more recent 3D titles have left fans unsatisfied, so there's a lot riding on warlords to impress and win those particular people over. I was lucky enough to spend some time with a pre-release build recently, and while there wasn't a ton there to experience, what I did see left me optimistic, and I'm excited to continue playing it once we get a solid release date. So if you like the look of what you're seeing, then you're able to wishlist it on Steam from the link below. I made a point when making this video to not fill this list with remasters, so there's a reason that the upcoming remaster of Command & Conquer 1 and Red Alert is the only one on here. The CNC series has had a long and storied history, perhaps the most prominent one in the genre. It takes back to the earliest days of RTSs, where developers were really just winging it to see what worked and unknowingly laid the groundwork for an immeasurable number of strategy games to come after it. All that's compounded by the series' end, which has been maligned by fans to the moon and back, 
and has since given no signs of any sort of revival or redemption. Until recently, that is. Petroglyph Games, the company founded by ex-Westwood employees, are remastering the original entries in the series, Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert, and once again, there's hope for the future. While we don't have a set release date yet, progress on the game is steady as seen by the frequent developer updates showcasing new features and important milestones. But perhaps the most exciting thing is the possibility of things after it. If the remasters are well received and sell well, then perhaps we will finally get a real full fat entry into the series. Speaking of which... These next three games are definitely not announced, but they are ones I'd love to see hit the market. The only rule is that it has to be a game that has a reasonable chance of being developed, so as much as I'd kill for an Impossible Creatures 2, the likelihood of that happening is probably around 0.0000001%. So to continue with my previous point of the possibility of a new Command & Conquer game, the first one I have here is... A new Command & Conquer game, who could have guessed? At this point it's been 12 years since Cade's Wrath, it's time for EA to sort it out and give us an actual entry. No, CNC4 doesn't count, and Rival certainly doesn't make the cut either. Over time, there have been glimmers of hope that have been popping up every so often, with Generals 2 probably being the most tangible, but nothing's ever come to fruition. Honestly, if you'd asked me a year ago, I'd say that there's zero likelihood of us ever seeing a new, full-on CNC game. But due to recent news of upcoming remasters, it looks like EA isn't quite ready to hang up the IP just yet. So if they do do well, my guess is that there's a pretty good shot of us seeing something resembling the game we've all spent years hoping for not too far off in the future. Now this might be a weird one for some of you, but if you know, you really know. Sins of a Solar Empire might be my absolute favourite RTS of all time, and that's not an award I'm giving out lightly. Its mix of thrilling action, huge scale and in-depth mechanics make it unlike anything else I've ever played and I still go back to it to this day. It seemed like the perfect game to receive a sequel. It got positive reviews, sold well, and has garnered a solid community to boot. It's even seen a lot of attention in the RTS modding scene, with community projects like Star Trek Armada 3 getting a lot of praise in its own right. And the developer Ironclad seems like they're in the position to make it, or even be making it as we speak. Their website clearly shows the love they have for Sins, and aside from a poorly received MOBA in 2015, there haven't been any full releases from them since Sin standalone expansion Rebellion. There have been some minor pieces of DLC though, so it's clear that the thought of future content isn't lost on them. They're also hiring right now if their site can be trusted, and you can read into that how you will. It seems Ironclad might be spinning up for another game, at least that's what I can hope for. Even if it ends up not to be a sequel to my favourite RTS of all time, I am excited to see where they take the genre next. And last, but certainly not least, another game that if you'd asked me a year ago about, I'd say it would never be made. The ever elusive Warcraft 4. Those two words have been on the lips of serious fanatics since Warcraft 3 was released back in 02, and ever since then Blizzard has been completely silent on whether they would return to the universe in its original form, instead choosing to focus on World of Warcraft and its ever-releasing expansions. Well, there is hope once again, this time in the form of Warcraft 3 Reforged. While there's definitely a chance that the only reason it exists is to make a quick buck on a beloved game, I am trying to be a bit more optimistic here. Like Command & Conquer, I'm hopeful that this is part of a gauge of sorts, to see the fan response for a possible sequel. Time will tell, and honestly, I'm not sure of the likelihood that our hopes will materialise into anything concrete. But we could dream, can't we? And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. What RTSs are you excited for, or would like to see be made? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more, there's some exciting videos coming in the pipeline, and you can expect full reviews on all of the upcoming games I've talked about today. There are links down below for all of them, and while you're there, you'll see a link to my Twitch channel where I stream 5 days a week, Monday to Friday at 1pm Pacific, 4pm Eastern. I'd love to see you over there. Thanks again very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.